Hello, 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 and welcome to the Pottervision Podcast, the podcast where every other week, myself, Lucas Kirkby, and another human being, Tom Lawrenson, we look at a chapter of the Harry Potter books and we scrutinise them whilst also being nice. This week, we're on episode 105, and we're on chapter 10 of book 5, which is 105 mixed together, Luna Lovegood. I wonder which new character will be in this chapter. <laughs> this week, as always, I am joined by none other than a debonair man, Tom Lawrenson. How are you? I'm trying to look like a snake. <laughs> I'm trying to look like a snake. What do you think? I think it's good. You look like you've had like plastic surgery. You know, like your lips done or your cheeks done. <laughs> It's very unusual to see you like that. Snake-like, am I? Let's see how snake-like I can be. <laughs> it's very that, because the AirPods you've got on look like the fangs have gone a bit wide. It's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope it's not too much of a personal question, uh, but how are you? I'm all right. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm all right. I'm gonna put this heater on actually. Yeah, a bit, uh, bit cold here. Always, always. I don't live in sunny Germany like you. It's been snowing today. It's been snowing here as well. It must be something going round. Yeah, snow. A bit of snow. Well, today the staff were telling me off because I've got my car now in Germany. Double Vision listeners will know that I drove with Poppy and Martina to Germany, and I've got the car now. Uh, but the staff were like, ooh, have you put your winter tyres on? Well, in the UK, winter tyres and summer tyres is not a thing. You buy tyres, right? But in Germany, you have tyres. I don't know what the difference is. Maybe they've just got less grip. But you have summer tyres for the summer, and then you have big, grippy ones for the winter, so you don't slip them out in the snow. But I was like, we have we have none of that in the UK. We just skid and crash. That's what we like to do. Yeah. Well, I remember once when, <laughs> when I was working in a school, there was loads of ice and snow. And I don't know if I've told this story before. But the way of coming out of that school was on a hill, and you'd go down the hill and out the drive. And once, it was very slippy, but I had my brakes on, and I was in a queue to come out of the car park. I had my handbrake on, and the car was stationary. Next thing, I hear a beep, 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 beep. A car behind me hits the back of my car, and even though I've got my brake on, because it's icy, my car starts skidding into going towards a building. <laughs> and I was kept trying to push the brakes, but it was very scary. But it was a bit like dodgems. So, what I'm saying is, maybe they've maybe they've cottoned onto something here with these winter tire business. I love that story. You've heard it before. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I love it nonetheless. <laughs> well, I apologise to anyone who's sick of me telling the same story twice. We're on episode 105, and um, I can't bloody remember everything I've said. Um, the story of winter tyres came up. My dad always says to me, Oh, I don't know. <laughs> he goes, I don't know how you're going to like... He goes, "You go, surely you two are going to run out of stories. I was like, well, if we die, we will. But things keep happening to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about life. Things keep happening. Yeah. And you've got but to be a yes person. Yeah, I didn't want to say yes, man, because that's a bit sexist, isn't it? Yeah. Women can be yes people as well. Right. I want to be a yes person, because if you're a yes person and you say yes to things like I do, you're more likely to end up making terrible decisions, which then turn into a fantastic story. Yeah. So if you want a good story, don't reason with any decisions. Yeah. Don't weigh up the pros and cons. Just say yes, 
do it, don't really think about it, and things will happen. You'll have a story or two at the end of it. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Yeah. I, for one, Lucas goes into things, you know, he's just happy. Yes, I'll, I'm up for anything. Me, I'm too lazy to make up decisions. So, uh, if someone wants to make a choice for me, I will let them do it, then complain about it afterwards. Like, yeah. you'll message me up, you'll ring me and you'll go, uh, I'm thinking of, uh, I'm thinking uh, for the Potter Vision tour, we, uh, we camp out um, <laughs> in a kennel. And I'll go like, yeah, you book it, son. And then I'll be in that kennel that night going, what are we doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, uh, hey, we've got good accommodation booked this year for the tour. We're excited. It's, it's about two weeks away, something like that. That's a bit scary. Uh, it's in two weeks, the tour. We've got 22 dates. Uh, if anyone's in Leicester, uh, we'd love for you to buy a ticket. Uh, <laughs> the others are looking all right, but Leicester's a bit thin on the ground. So, yeah, if you want to buy tickets for Leicester, but yeah, there's all the all the dates are available, and uh, we'd love to see you there. I think it's I, th I think it's because Leicester's using the old artwork. That'll be it. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Leicester. <laughs> But yeah, we talk we we talk about a city as if it's a person. But yeah, we're looking forward mm. to so we've got a few travel lodges booked in, but also uh a lovely couple that we've met through Potter Vision uh of are gonna put us up when we're in Scotland, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, very, very nice of them. You know who you are. And we one hope. of them is a doctor, so I've been saving up all my ailments to show him and get a diagnosis all at once. Do you want to put a bit of cream on that, Tom? No, no, no. I've got doctors next month. Your GP? No, no, no. He's in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bloody hell. That's exciting. Can I be there for the examination? Of course you can. You can be the assistant. <laughs> Scalpel, please. There you go. <laughs> no, no. That's a butter knife. Oh. <laughs> Love to be like a doctor's assistant or a dentist assistant for the day. Thermometer, please. Oh no, that's your finger, Lucas. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think like I remember getting my teeth checked, and I feel like the dentist assistant job must be so boring because they'd be like C three, that looks fine. D two. That's all right. F3. Ooh, that's part of a battleship. <laughs> put, a, put a cross on that one. But I, think, I saw oh, the setup coming a mile away, and I wanted to interrupt so badly, but I thought, no, he's going to do his own punchline with this one, so I let him. You knew the punchline before I did. I didn't even know I was going to be talking about battleships until I did the second uh, second letter and number combination. I had it on the first one. Did you? <laughs> you behind me. I didn't even have a joke set up. Oh, you're clever. And that's why Tom is still on the comedy circuit and I've been kicked out. Kicked out? You moved to a different country because you're in love. In love, <laughs> kicked out of comedy. <laughs> Potato, tomato. All right. It's the same thing. How is it? How is foreign country anyway? How is school? How is people? How is supermarket? How is food? Yeah, it's great. Well, there's a there's I a see supermarket. you've got a great big bushy beard now. <laughs> I just need to get rid of it. But um, <laughs> the battery on my razor's run out, and um, I don't have an adapter for the plug. <laughs> so um, I've just let it grow a bit. But don't worry. I'll have it nicely shaved for the tour. Quick question, quick question. Yeah? Do you and Martina have an Amazon Prime account? Um, I think we've got Amazon, yeah. So you could have a, a razor in your post box tomorrow morning if you wanted? Maybe, I don't know. There's no anyway. way in there. Hey, I don't know if I've told people this, but uh, I've I passed my exam. I did an exam uh, in on my birthday in November. 
and uh, it's an A1 basic German exam, but you need it to be able to have a, a long-term residency, and uh, I bloody passed! <laughs> so I've got a lovely certificate, and um, we've now submitted all the documents to the uh, foreign, it's definitely not called the foreign office, but we'll, <laughs> we'll call it that, the, you know, the immigration thingy, and... Um, yeah, I'm hoping in a couple of weeks I'll get my long-term residency so I can stay here legally. Yeah? So let me get this I'm straight. I'm a legal alien. You had to pass a language test to stay in a country. Yeah, exactly. Do they not know you speak the language premier? English. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, the language they speak here is English, it's German. So I've had what to learn else do all German Germans food? speak? All Germans speak English. Come on, Germany. Speak it at me. Ah? <laughs> a lot of them do, yeah. I will give you that. Uh, but yeah, it was like... It's stuff like you listen to a train announcement or somebody is at a hotel booking a room and ordering at a restaurant and things like that. So you had to do writing, listening, reading and speaking. And uh, for speaking, it was interesting because um, th there were two ladies that came in, and um, they were doing <laughs> they were doing the the speaking thing with me, and they were like, "Right, you work in a butcher's." So I was like, "All right," and uh, they were asking me for a sausage, if you don't mind me saying. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> then uh, then oh, I forgot to I forgot about this. They were like, right, now we work in a shop. So I was like, right, you work in a clothes shop. So they were like, can we help you, please? And that's like improvise a scene. So I was like, um, oh, can I have um, can I have a T-shirt, please, a blue T-shirt? And they go, oh, what size would you like? And I said my size for T-shirts, which at the minute is XL. Yeah. And they started laughing as if I was telling a joke. They were like, what size? And I went, XL. And went, XL, okay. And then they pretended to go go and get me an XL t-shirt. I think they thought I was being funny, but that, that, is, that is the size that's comfortable on me that doesn't look like I've been pushed through a sock. They always manhandle you in Germany, don't they? Remember oh, about yeah. a, year, a year ago, you were having suits fitted and they were slapping you on the arse. Like he was putting his hands about, down my trousers, hoisting them up. Tossing you off. Unbearable. I don't know about that. <laughs> that was private. <laughs> That's <laughs> private. You do that in private. <laughs> I know. I don't know what it is. Maybe maybe they just see me and think, he don't mind that happening to him. I got invited to like a launch party of a new Disney Plus show called Chippendales. Right, now is this the little chipmunks or the strippers? The strippers, genuinely. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. How was it? They said, who's a hunk? They go, old Tommy Laurie. They go, get him down. All right? I uh, I have to get a uh, train. They pay for my train, but I go midweek and I manage to get a, quite a cheap first class train return. Oh. Because, like, normally trains are like a hundred quid return anyway this was a hundred and fifty yeah. but i thought if they're paying why not yeah definitely what is how i've never been in a first class carriage what is the difference what do you get down oh there? you wouldn't like it you wouldn't like it what is it what how is it better Oh, you! it wouldn't be for you. I couldn't imagine you in first class. <laughs> Come on, what, what happens? What's it like? So, I go to the train, right? I walk up. Yeah. And a woman takes one look at me, and she, she goes, you all right? Like that. And I'm like, yeah, I want to get in first class. And she's like, mm. So I go, go in, <laughs> and I go and sit in my seat, and they've not checked my ticket yet, but they are acting like I'm trying to pull one over. They're like, it's like, do we really have to go through this? Uh, yeah. They go, have you got, they go, do you want a drink? 
I go, ooh, what can I have? Yeah. And they start, yeah. they, they sign, they list all the drinks. And I go, mm. ooh, I'll have a Coca-Cola, please. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And she brings my Coca-Cola. And then she goes, do you want any lunch? And I'm like, ooh, I've already eaten. Yeah. But I go, can I have any snacks? And she's like, <sighs> And she brings back a bowl of pretzels and some chocolates here. Yeah. It's all big and spacious and nice. And then halfway through, the man checks my ticket and it's fine. And he walks off. And after I've had my ticket, ticket checked, she's completely different. She's like, you all right, love? Can I get you another Coke? Fresh glass. Fresh glass for you. You just relax, darling. We'll be in London soon. Don't you worry. Big kiss on the cheek. <laughs> hey, that's nice. So it's just like second class, but... A bit of prejudice involved, followed a bit, by... A bit of prejudice. <laughs> oh, how lovely. Well, that's not made me want to spend an extra £50 on a, on a train ticket. I'll pay about £5 to get myself some snacks and a drink that I'll keep in my bag. And I'll bring <laughs> it onto the train with me. But um, So I go, to this, uh, I go to this Disney event, yeah? Oh, yeah. Guess who's presenting it? It's a Disney event, so I'm going to go with Dave Benson Phillips. I'll give you a clue. Okay. Level one. And diversity, Ashley Banjo. <laughs> Jordan Banjo and the little one. Yeah, all right. Sorry, we couldn't get Ashley Banjo. We've got Jordan Banjo and the little one. Hey, that's good. Hey, you've seen Diversity Live, or some of them. Just, well, not dancing, it's about a just, third of Diversity. Just, and I stole these golden dice. Oh, yeah, you told me to ask you about that. I stole golden dice from a... There you go. Side one. Side three. I don't know what they're for, That's but good, I've got them it? now. It's a lovely little trinket to keep. Very nice. What else? Bloody hell. And dare I ask, if you were at a Chippendales launch party, did you see a bare bottom? Um, can I be honest with you? Yeah. I wish that's all I saw. Oh, no. You saw a bear something else. Man goes up, right? Pulls down his trousers. <laughs> uh, it's Disney. Right? Bare bottom. We're all like... <laughs> yeah. He then bends over, and we're like, ooh, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> yes. Parts his bottom, right, to reveal his anus. Yeah. All hairy and sweaty. Was not nice. Yeah. <laughs> and he does a big blow off, right? We're like, oh, that's strange. Like that. Security brush the stage, drag him off. Wasn't meant to be here. He's uh, not part of the event. <laughs> Brilliant. So it was a prankster that. <laughs> That's spread his cheeks and did a trump. <laughs> hey, you're living the bloody high life now, aren't you? Now you got this Disney deal. Bloody hell, if that's the things you get to see, that's like something that would happen on a Potvision tour. <laughs> but, and after that, everyone left because there was a smell in the room and no one liked it. Bet there was. Bloody hell. If that's the Chippendales, I'm not watching. Mm. Bloody hell. Very good. I want to be your plus one at the next one. Yeah, right. I've had less people asking me for that, but you can be. Let me tell you this. I had my last day at work. Oh, here we go. Hey, I'm not even having to ask you about these things. I had a list of things I wanted to ask you. I had my last day at work, right? So, second to last day, I go in. And they go, uh, oh, we're moving offices because uh, there's a big turd in the toilet or something. I'm like, right, whatever. 
And they go, yeah. so you're going to need to go to a different building. And I thought, actually, I think I might be ill. And I realized at that point, it was easier for them to understand, to, for me to be ill than me to be there. Because uh, yeah. my this manager goes, oh, are you? Oh, brilliant. Well, if you're ill, you got to go home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so went home. Stole, stole some bits. Um, but uh, uh, I don't want them coming after me. I don't want to give these bits back. Um, so I went home. And then the next day I woke up and I was like, do you know what? Instead of going in on my last day, I'm just going to not go in on my last day. I'm going to mm. not answer my phone. But I got told on my last day, uh, my colleague went to me. He was like, oh, yeah, they're all slagging you off here yesterday. I go, excuse me? He goes, yeah, there was a bit of work on your desk um, that needed to be completed. Did I say this on Double Vision? Yeah, hey, you did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're all slagging me off, calling me lazy. I saying I should have been sacked years ago. And I was like, oh, right, you horrible rotters. I don't want to be in here anyway. So I didn't go back in. Yeah. But the thing is... <sighs> Sometimes the silent goodbye is the best goodbye because you stop existing in people's heads and they'll never see each other ever again. And is there anything more beautiful than that? I don't think so. I'm trying to think, but I cannot think of anything more beautiful than everybody at your work forgetting about you. I'd love that. Honestly, I wish they all had amnesia. Yeah, yeah. Bloody hell. So how was your last day? Well, I didn't go in, so... Uh... Oh. You told me on Double Vision... You told On Double Vision, you told me the story about your second from last day and your first to... Oh, no, I said it wrong. Yeah, your second from last day and your third to last day. And then you went, hey, I'll save the story of my last day... For the main podcast. Yeah, it's great. My... The story is you didn't go in. Yeah, it's a nice lie-in. Great. You had a nice lie-in. Lovely. They called, so now, they called me and they left... You're a man of leisure. How, how are you filling up your days? They called me and they left me a voicemail, but I'm not interested in listening to that. I'll just be awkward. Oh, I've got you a card and a cake. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even pick up a cake if it, if there was one. I doubt there would be. No one wished me well at that place. Hate-filled people. And I, this is a call to action for anyone else who is hated at their work. Quit immediately. Yeah. Press pause and ring up your boss and say, that's it. You've abu you can abuse yeah. me no further. Yeah. Because you are a beautiful person... Mm. And you deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. Mm. And we mean you specifically, who's listening. Sir Snowy. <laughs> no, 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 not Sir Snowy, but everybody else. No, <laughs> no, no. But yeah, it's true, though, isn't it? You should be respected where you work. I think people get into habits, don't they, of working somewhere. And even if it's a bit bloody shit... So the idea of changing your jobs is a bit scary, isn't it? Have I told you uh, that my but... um, car's been leaking water for a long time? Oh, that's good. So not leaking water as in water's coming out of the car, but water coming into the car. Oh, that's nice. Is that the driver's seat or the passenger seat? Driver's footwell, passenger footwell, back seat, um, back seat, and... Uh... Boot. I said to my parents, I was like, can you help me diagnose what's wrong with my car? Because all of the interior is getting soaked. And my parents went to me, well, you've spilt a bottle of water in it. And I went, I haven't. <laughs> they go, you have? Like, not even joking, not even yeah. trying to wind me up. Because what I do, I keep an empty, I keep an empty bottle of, um, like a water in the car. So if I ever need water for my uh, wiper fluid, I can just, I've always got a b bottle that's explicitly for that. They saw that bottle yeah. and they went, you've been on the back seat of your car playing around with water. And I'm, why would I be in the back seat of my own car having a water <laughs> fight on my yeah. own? 
No, I think they're onto something there. You, you're definitely the type to do that. <laughs> I'm team Mr. and Mrs. Lawrenson. So I took my car to a garage and um, to get some issues fixed. And it's funny when you don't know anything about a car because the guy is saying things to me and I've got, it's like I'm a foreigner, like not being able to speak the language yeah. of the locals. Because yeah. he'd be like, yeah. um, two new wishbones on your car. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah well i'm like that you know whenever like a builder's talking to me or like a mechanic i just feel like saying look you've duped me already you don't you don't have to we don't have to do this you don't have to give me gobbledygook mm. technical terms you've duped me just charge me whatever you want and i'll fall for it all right yeah yeah Look, look. I've... This isn't rogue traders. There's no hidden cameras. You do what you like. Look, I've got cunt ricking across my forehead. It's there. Plain yeah. as day. <laughs> right? Come on. Yeah? As soon as you want to, you can just start throwing fag ends down the back of my sofa. Yeah? Pissing in the corner. Charge me, you know, 10 grand. Yeah? Throw them down the back of my collar. Any room down there? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I've not been up to too much, but uh, I'm excited for the tour. We've got a radio interview on Saturday for BBC Radio York. It won't be the first time that we've been on radio as a, a duo, but it will be the first time that we've been on radio live. The interview will be recorded live, and it's a Saturday morning interview. Oh, God. Uh, so we've got to be on our best behaviour, haven't we? Oh, I hope no one says anything naughty on the radio. Well, I do as well, because <laughs> me and you have done uh, a family festival doing Pottervision, where you've just said all the naughty words that are usually in it. Mm. So we'll see how it goes on Saturday morning. It's BBC Radio York, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope no one tells the spread bottom story on the BBC Radio York. <laughs> I hope you tell that story. That, I think that's all right, Saturday morning. As long as you don't say ass. I think you can say bottom, bum cheek, trump. Um, what Can I add that a plume of powder came out? <laughs> <laughs> What? White powder? I think you'd put some um, talcum powder down there. <laughs> that is definitely on film as well, somewhere. <laughs> Brilliant! What was it, in protest of the Chippendales or what? Or just a silly prank? <laughs> That's just showbiz. That is showbiz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dearie me. I turned to a... I can't say I've ever seen anyone else's aim. I turned to a man handing out um, little cocktail sausages, and I said to him, what does it all mean? <laughs> but he couldn't give me an answer. Yeah. Bloody hell. Well. So, are you ready for this chapter? Let me just go to the toilet. <laughs> Back yeah. in a sec. Don't press on record on anything. Did I hear you say you're ready for a chapter rundown? Yes, please. It's chapter 10 of the Order of the Phoenix, Luna Lovegood. Well, as usual, the Weasleys are completely unprepared for the thing that happens every year, and that's getting to the train for the Hogwarts Express to go to Hogwarts. They're all running about being late and all that business. Anyway, they get to the train. Sirius decides to come along as a doggy. He's running round, chasing away birds. He's having a great time. Next thing, they're on the train, and Ron and Hermione get to go to the Prefect's carriage. Ooh! It's a special carriage just for prefects where they can talk. So Harry and Ginny are on their own and they go into a carriage. And there's a strange girl there. She's reading a magazine upside down called The Quibbler. And her name is Luna Lovegood. And she's a bit mm, unusual, shall we say, but seems very nice. Next minute, Ron and Hermione are back. 
And then Draco Malfoy turns up, being a bit of an ass. He says the word dogging, which Harry starts to worry is a reference to Sirius Black, who often goes dogging. <laughs> then uh, they get off the train. Uh, Harry's a bit surprised that he's not seen uh, Hagrid. Instead, it's Wilhelmina Grubbly Plank, if you don't mind me saying. And then they get on a carriage that's normally drawn by something invisible, but Harry sees a horrible skeletal horse dragon thing, and he's like, what's that? Ron and Hermione can't see it, but Luna Lovegood can. She's like, I can see them as well. And he's like, bloody hell, you're a bit odd, and I see the same things as you. Does that make me strange, I wonder? Anyway, then they go off into the castle, and then... The rest of that page was blank. Must have been the end of the chapter. <laughs> what a chapter, eh? Luna Lovegood. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the start of the chapter. Uh, Harry has a few weird dreams that I uh, feel like should have been dwelt on a bit longer because they're very strange. Harry has one dream of... Mrs. Weasley, first of all, he's dreaming about his friend's mum, okay? Mrs. Weasley sobbing over Creature's body, watched over by Ron and Hermione wearing crowns. That needs a professional to come in and interpret that. What does it all mean? I had this dream of my friends. <laughs> yeah. I understand the crowns bit because that's like prefix, but what is the creature bit? Yeah. Why is Ron's mum sobbing over a dead elf? Maybe a creature is a um a nod towards Dobby dying. Oh, maybe it's a premonition. Yeah. Mrs. Weasley is Harry and Creature is Dobby. Well, we were uh, we were gonna go. Well, we want to go and look at some of the filming locations while we're on tour, don't we? We're gonna make a little video yeah. diary, and we're gonna visit some. Of, so we're gonna go to the Hogsmeade Station, which is an actual station in Yorkshire. We're gonna go to King's Cross. We're gonna go to a couple of old abbeys and castles. The place we were thinking of going. Well, I was thinking of going was the beach where Dobby's dead, but it's a bit too far out of the way for us, so. Probably won't do that. I'd go. That, I'd go to that beach to piss on his grave. Well, apparently there is a proper grave there for Dobby with like flowers and stuff on it. I'd, I'd go there and I'd say, I'd shout at the grave, go, "Stay dead, stay dead." Tom doesn't like elves. Yeah, mm. he's an anti-spewer. Hmm. We are going back after after a summer of cleaning someone else's house. We're finally going back to Hogwarts. Yeah. <laughs> I think if someone made me do that, I'd be more looking forward to going to school. If only someone hadn't have let me have a lovely summer holiday, playing with friends, doing fun activities, going on maybe a vacation every now and then. If only me mum and dad hadn't let me do all that and made me clean my friend's nana's house, maybe I'd have looked forward to September the 1st a bit more. Yeah, maybe think mm. about that, mother, if you're listening. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Did you like going back to school? Did you look forward to September or not? No, I hated it. If uh, they said to me in year, if they said at the end of year six, they'd gone... If you want, you don't have to go to high school. I'd go, yeah, I won't go. I'll take you up on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, would, I used to look forward to it, uh, I think, just to see people, I think. Because where I, the, the estate I grew up was full of old biddies. Like, I, me and my sister were the youngest ones. And then the next oldest on the street were me mum and dad. <laughs> and then after them, there was about another 20-year gap. And then everyone else was about 60, 70 plus. Do you have a house a bungalow? 
No, no, it's a two-story house. I don't mind. Don't mind saying that on the podcast. Yeah. Two-story. Well, up until the age of about six or seven, we lived in one house, and then we moved across the road to the other side of the street, and then they've lived in the same house ever since. You moved across the road. What, tell me why. Just because it was a slightly bigger house. Well, the streets. Uh, well, I don't want to. Dis- no, that description will give away the actual street. But the houses on the street are all different. No two houses are the same. Um, mm. So the house across the road was detached, whereas the old mm-hmm. one was semi-detached, and slightly bigger with a bigger garden as well. So it was just a, they wanted to stay in the same place but have a slightly bigger house. That sounds like luxury. Oh, it was. Do you know what? A room for every child they had. <laughs> did you, yeah, on really, that no. estate with all the old ladies, did you find your first love on that estate? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm saying, was your like teenage girlfriend on that estate? I never had a teen. I never had a teenage girlfriend. Mm, you sure? Yes, I was Dorothy a from next door. You never not Dorothy, <laughs> not your Pamela. Eyes, your eyes never wandered, did they not? No, <laughs> no. But uh, well, I must have told the story about Harold across the road, who who I used to swap birthday cake for sweets. Have I told you? That? Have I told you that no. story? No. <laughs> So I, as a child, never really liked cake. And I didn't really like birthday cake either. But I used to have a deal with... He was like in his 90s, this bloke. It was called Harold. And I had a deal with him where I would take the cake at a birthday party. So I'd take my party bag with my cake. Mm -hmm. I'd say, thank you very much. But I would not eat it. I would take it to Harold. So I'd knock on his door... And I'd say, hello, Harold, uh, here's some cake. Then he'd disappear, he'd go, oh, thank you. Then he'd take it, disappear for like five minutes, because it used to take him ages. And then I'd hear him in another room going, oh, what have we got here? <laughs> and then he'd come back with some sweeties, and he'd give me some sweeties as a trade. So you didn't like cake? No, no, I never really ate cake as a kid. I like cake now. As a kid, I'd- I think it was something to do with jam and sponge i don't know it'd be interesting to find out what was going on there yeah what with the with harold no with you i think i think it'd be a good i be you'd make your little childhood would make the uh, the foundations of a great british film yeah <laughs> like what kind of film like a I billy elliot type thing no, like a little, you know, you ever seen Millions? No, oh, and uh, I've read the book, but I've not seen the film. So, in, like, it's like Millions, about a little boy who wins a lottery, but instead of a little boy who wins a lottery, just a strange little boy who has all a hundred different quirks. I don't like cake. <laughs> My yeah. best friend is an old man called Harold. Um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I make little videos in my back garden. Um, That's true. I uh, I I am sick on the promenade and sleep on the beach. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, it'd be brilliant. You could call it brilliant. David Williams book. I might talk to David Williams about. I think writing it could a be book called, about me. Call it brilliant boy, and it's you. Yeah. Hmm. It'll be the next bestseller after Rat Burger. Brilliant, Brilliant boy. boy. <laughs> yeah. That'll be good. I might call him and just say, you know, do a, do a story about me. Oh dear. How much do you reckon I'd get royalties for that? Ten million quid. And the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Bloody hell, that's exciting. Right. What I'll do, I'll give him a ring after the uh, after the recording. Mm. Yeah. Tom, if I had David Williams's number, 
Would you want it? <sighs> so I say I've got David Wallace's number, and then what do I do? I call him, send him a voice note. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Hey, Williams, uh, it's me, buddy. Yeah, it's the one, Tom Lawrenson. Yeah. I'm hanging out with the big wigs, Jordan Banjo and the little one. Right? I'm a guy you want to know. I've just seen a man spread his cheeks and fart out a powder puff into the into the audience. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> So they get ready to go to this, uh, to get the train, right? And Siri, <laughs> Sirius, right, wants to be a doggy. He's like, I'll come with you and I'll be a doggy, right? So they're still in number 12, Grimmel Place, and he's asked the dog coming out of the house. Yeah. Like, no, 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 you can transfigure in the car. Don't come out. <laughs> Why are you coming out as the dog already, right? Coming as you... <laughs> Transfigure in the car and then come out as the dog. How about that? <laughs> and he's like, I think this is ridiculous. He's snapping at pigeons and chasing his own tail. Right. He can definitely not be doing that. He has the control to you not do that. You gotta play the part. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play the part. think he's just showing off part. or do you think he has those genuine urges as a dog? Um... I don't know, he probably has them urges as a human, doesn't he? I think so, the weird old bastard. What's the human equivalent of chasing your own tail? Slapping yourself on the arse? Yeah, I think so, yeah. What's the human equivalent of chasing a pigeon? The same. Slapping his arse and chasing a pigeon. <laughs> yeah. Bloody hell, like, stop making a scene of yourself. Be a good little dog. <laughs> Uncle. Come on, come on, Godfather. <laughs> Moody's. And then at the end. Go on. Oh, go on. No, you go. All right, I'll go. And when they're saying goodbye, so he's a massive dog, and he jumps on top of Harry and has his paws over his shoulders like this. Mm. And Mrs. Weasley goes, it's more like a dog. Mrs. Weasley, have you ever seen a big dog? Every big dog does that. You get a big dog excited, it jumps up and puts its paws on your shoulders. What dogs have you seen? He is acting like a bloody dog, eh? Act like a dog. Hump Harry's leg. <laughs> Come on. Have a shit there. <laughs> Come on, act like a bloody dog, eh? Eat these biscuits. Oh, this dog's been drinking Guinness. <laughs> Smelly dog breath. Mad Eye Moody's on the platform, like, running his mouth and stuff. How can oh, yeah. any of the children act familiar with Mad Eye Moody when they know him not at all? The previous year's Mad Eye Moody was, for lack of a better word, an imposter, right? So the man they got to know is in jail or dead. I forget what they did with him. So this Mad-Eye Moody is a complete stranger to them. Yeah, and they all know it, don't they? It's not been a secret. The man they thought was Mad-Eye Moody was, in fact, Barty Crouch Jr. Hello, Father. Yeah, so how can you trust that person? <laughs> yeah, so how can you trust somebody? You've got to start from square one. Don't be patting him on the back and squeezing his bottom. Yeah. You don't know that man, eh? Mm. Squeeze your own bottom like a dog would do. Mm. He's effectively a stranger. And also, I love yeah, this. he is, actually. Ron and Hermione get whisked away to the prefect carriage. Now, that, to me, sounds like bliss. Oh, yeah, definitely. A carriage away from everyone else. Oh. And I bet they've got right plump pillows. I bet the one thing that I don't agree with, though, is that they've got these prefect duties. Do you know what I mean? So they've got to, like, do patrols oh, of the yeah. train. What's this unpaid labour? Excuse me. Come on. Yeah, I need a teacher or one of the dinner duty doing that. 
reminder for people. It's not for the children. Don't let people make you take on unpaid work as if it's your duty, right? We're not in the war anymore. It's your duty to serve this country. No, it's not. Why am I recycling for free, right? Why am I sorting all my plastics out for the council? Uh, ER yeah. council, here's all my glass. Are you going to go sell it? Yeah, we are. We're going to go sell all your glass. Thanks. <laughs> I never thought of it like that. Yeah, sorting out your recycling. It's free labour. Where's my portion of that council? Where's my Where's my kickback? I might ring my local councillor and be like, hey, what about this? And they'll be like, ich kann nicht English sprechen. And I'll be like, whatever. Shut up. Recycling. I've got a pal who tells me I'm doing unpaid labour. I'm sick of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sick of it, if you don't mind me saying it. Yeah. Well, it, you know... I think we've just got used to recycling. I remember when it first came out where, you know, you didn't just have a black bin. You had a green one and a brown one and a blue one. And it was a massive bloody effort, wasn't it? Thought, oh, can't just shove it all in the bin. I have to break down my cardboard. Wash out my yoghurt pots. It's an effort now. But the thing is, you've got to look at it this way. I am... I don't, I'm not speaking for everyone else here. I'm just speaking for me, right? I'm not saying anyone else should change yeah. their ways. But the thing is about me, I am just one of eight billion people on Earth, right? I think it's fine if I don't recycle. Everyone else do it, sure, right? But I don't <laughs> want to do it. Yeah. But the problem is, Tom, a lot of people have the same attitude as you. Well, to be honest with you, I do recycle. I resent it, but I do it. Right? I do it. Yeah. I hold my hands up high and I say, yes, your majesty. Yes, I'll recycle for you. I'll collect all my glass. How much How much of my glass and plastic do you want? Oh, I have my paper as well. Good Lord, is nothing sacred. You know, I think, you know, it's like, right, glass, plastic, cardboard, whatever. Food waste, that's private. <laughs> I, you're not having that. You're not seeing how much of my dinner I'm eating. You're not seeing how much off the end of an onion I chop off. That's personal information that I don't want being shared. They already tax us to high heaven, right? Why do they also want our garbage? Right, give us your garbage as well. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. Hey, are you eating that banana? Well, have it here then. Dessert. Apple's looking a bit rotten. Do you want it or do you want to give it to us, the council? I like what they did in Edinburgh this year or last year when they just let all the garbage pile up in the streets. Now that is democracy. <laughs> that is democracy. Do you know what? The first day of that, I was like, whoa, that's horrible. Look at all that rubbish on the street. Day three or four, I was like, this is just part of life now. This is great. Me and you had three pet rats each. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. I had Snap, Crackle and Pop, and you had Poo 1, Poo 2, and Poo 3. I knew you were going to say Poo. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. You're a Poo Freak. Very good. Anyway. I'm a Poo Freak. I'm not the one who's seen a bare anus this week. And a, and a fart cloud. A plume. What did you call it? You called it like a... Powder puff. <laughs> Powder puff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Luna Lovegood. We get introduced to her. And Harry's in this carriage, right? What is going... I suppose they really do lean in to childhood ignorance. But they're acting like... Yeah. I don't think as a kid at that age, I would be that arsed about being in a carriage with two, three very nice people, Luna Lovegood, Neville Longbottom, yeah. and Ginny Weasley. But he's like, oh, God, yeah. I hope no one sees me in this carriage with these freaks. Why do they not know who she is? She's in the year below them, and there's only about 40 kids in every year. I remember at school... 
you'd know every single kid at school. And there'd be, there was about six, 700 kids in my school. How has he got to year five? And he's like, oh, who's that? It's Luna Lovegood. She's in the year below you. You see her in the corridor every morning, noon and night. How do you not know her? She's an oddball. People must talk about her because she's strange. Mm. By normal standards. Not normal standards. You know what I mean. Speaking of strange. By societal standards. Speaking of strange, um, we're doing a double vision coming out uh, next Monday. And <laughs> we put it to yeah. the patrons. It's like, what do you want it to be on? We can either tackle the long-awaited Fantastic Beast films, right? Or we can do an episode on Wallace and Gromit, The Wrong Trousers. Landslide, Wrong Trousers. At the moment, I think it's about 71% of the voters have voted for Wallace and Gromit, The Wrong Trousers. Uh, which I'm glad about, because that's about a fifth of the length of Fantastic Beasts. So, so it'll be nice to prepare so for. So funny. Patrons. Oh, I listen to a... Uh... Harry Potter podcast. Oh, really? I pay for the Patreon. Oh, really? What are you listening to? Oh, they're doing an episode on The Wrong Trousers. Sorry? The Wrong Trousers, Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> What's that going to do with Harry Potter? Nothing. But we asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they doing that? I voted. I voted for it. <laughs> I think we just keep doing that. Like, next week, we'll put a poll out and we'll be like, what do you want to watch? Crimes of Grindelwald or Close Shave? Close Shave. Secrets of Dumbledore or A Matter of Loaf and Death? What do you want? Aren't they making a new Wallace and Gromit film, feature length? Yeah. It's called um, Wallace and Gromit and the Wheels of Sorrow. Genuinely. Yeah. Bloody hell. That sounds a bit sad for Wallace and Gromit, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's more adult-themed, because like most of the Wallace and Gromit audience have grown up now. I think it's got, I think it's got a 15 rating on it. No. And they, honestly, look it up. You're wild. Honestly, you're... look it up, and they're finally launching Wallace's new cra catchphrase, Cracking ass, Gromit! <laughs> Cracking ass, Sean! <laughs> Right, I've I've just Googled it and it doesn't exist. Ah, sorry. Oh, there must be some... Oh, oh I up. guess the scoop is dropping here, of all places, the Pot Vision podcast. Wow, we really are a lucky audience, aren't we? Cracking ass, moon robot. <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah, so uh, listen, patrons, it's worth the money if you want to follow us. Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing Wallace and Gromit the wrong trousers. Come on. It's got feathers but grow in it. We're getting it's a classic. We're getting neck deep in it. Oh yeah. Oh why we are. Yeah. Bloody hell, it's gonna be good. I wonder if we should do rat race as well. That seems like something that me and you're obsessed with. <laughs> we don't talk about rat race very often, but it's definitely on brand with everything we talk about. Da, 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 da. Vagina. <laughs> yeah, we might do rat race. We'll see if people want rat race or um I don't know, something else. Mm. Very good. So that they introduced Luna Lovegood, right? And they so they've decided to describe her with three things to show you that she's strange. Number one, she's got a wand behind her ear, right? I think that's absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that. Secondly, she's got a necklace of butterbeer corks. It's a bit quirky, right? Next, she's reading the newspaper upside down. Right. That is ridiculous. What, what are you doing that for? The other two, they're a bit quirky. They're a bit odd. But number three... You know, why are you reading upside down? That'll give you a headache, surely. Mm. Maybe it's... Uh, I don't know. I can't really give an answer for that. I mean, I could try and... Um, <laughs> I could 
try and answer? No, don't worry. <laughs> no, don't worry. You got nothing. You got nothing, have you? We are down to earth at Potter Vision, right? We 105 episodes. We've never blagged an answer once, right? We've always shot from the hip, right? Spoken from the heart. And if we don't have anything, we don't say anything. Yeah, because we'd rather be honest than bullshitters. Right. So we're just going to move on to the next topic. Yeah, it looks a bit bad, doesn't it? So Neville's got a mimbless mimbletonia. It's like a cactus. It's a magic cactus, basically, mm. kind of thing. And he tells them, he shows them it. He goes, I got this from me, great uncle Algy in Assyria. And he goes, I'm going to see if I can breed from it. Right. Don't be doing that, Neville. We do not want you to try and breed with that. Because <laughs> in a minute he touches it and then it explodes and loads of horrible liquid comes out of it. Don't be breeding with that. It sounds a bit nasty. Neville comes in. and um, Well, actually, Luna sits up and she goes, You're Harry Potter. And he goes, I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Young lad. Horrible to anyone. And then she looks at... He is horrible to anyone, yeah. She turns to Neville Longbottom and she goes, Who are you? I don't know you. And he goes, I'm nobody. Just tell, just tell us your name, dear. <laughs> we don't need all this... Mm. I'm me, little old me. Oh, you wouldn't want to know my name. I'm nobody. Oh, like... <laughs> don't want to know anything about me. I'm boring, I am. I'm boring. Dead boring. Go on, ask me again. <laughs> oh, don't want to tell you. You wouldn't be interested anyway. Want to see me plant? I, I love this little play. <laughs> Do you like it? I don't like it. I don't think it's any good. Do you? Do you think? What do you think about my little play I'm doing right now? You're in it, you know. You're a character. <gasps> I wouldn't tell you all about that. You wouldn't be interested, would, would you? you? <laughs> would you? <laughs> we should write that. <laughs> let's, let's write it. Somebody listening, just write it down for us and send it in a PDF. <laughs> yeah. Does um, Neville go on to marry Luna Lovegood? <laughs> Sounds about right, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know, does he matter? I've no idea. Uh, Vicky Alstead, I don't know if you're listening live. Uh, how could you be? We don't put these out live. But does, <laughs> does, does uh, Neville <laughs> marry uh, Luna Lovegood? Oh, no. Well, thanks, Vicky. <laughs> so, even in the film version, I looked it up. Even in the film version, it's implied that he fancies Luna in the books. Well, I don't think it's said in the books, but J.K. Rowling revealed that he actually marries Hannah Abbott, Han who is the Ravenclaw prefect. So, there you are. Did you know that, Vicky Halstead? We're starting to name more and more Patreon followers and fans without asking them if they want that <laughs> and we mentioned their full names uh so feel free <laughs> feel free to tell us off if that's something that you would well let like. me tell you this how funny must it be in the <laughs> wizarding world you understand why people start going out with muggles because you're like oh, who am i gonna marry the, my options are someone from my school fucking hell i can't escape you lot I imagine if you had to marry someone from your school oh, you'd yeah. fucking be like not a chance yeah. Well, and as well, there aren't that many that go to the school. Like, in every year altogether, you've probably got a choice of about 30 women. Well, also... And that's your life all partner. All men, all thems. But let me tell you this. I went to Munters High, UK. Say again, sorry. The high sorry. school I went to... Munters yeah. High. <laughs> Was it? Yeah. Bloody hell. 
Yeah. I got bullied for being pretty. <laughs> Did you? Oof, that happened to me. That's why we... Be- that's why we... Yeah. They were like, oh, you, you look that's gorgeous. We- that's why we became mates. Punch me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, sh- we shared over our bond of being bullied for our looks. Hey, mm. you, beautiful. <laughs> mm. Yeah? Mm. Fit are you? Fit are you? But he's shaking me. You see how fit you are with the slats off. <laughs> Don't talk to him. He's a hunk. Uh, you're not with us. We're the ugly group. For anyone wondering what the silence is on the audio version of the podcast, we're uh, we've been snooty with our faces, faces aren't we? Mm. Well, <laughs> we're pulling funny faces. This is what you get if you watch the video version. Yeah, they're on YouTube. Yeah, they are on YouTube. Uh, not many people watch them. I think we get like a thousand listeners to the pod, and about five people watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we don't really advertise it, do we? The um, the patrons get it the same day as the audio version, and then a few days later or whatever, or sometimes the same day, depending on what Tom decides to do with it, uh, you get the video version. So you can actually watch us talking no, to it, each other. I just other decided and to put fun. it out the same, at the same time. There you go. So, yeah, it's all available uh, from when we started recording it, which is probably about episode 70. So you can enjoy that. Harry would have liked Cho to discover him with a group of very cool people laughing at him. God forgive you, Harry Potter. You with very cool people. And also, why do you think you're any cooler than the people you're in a carriage with? And also, Cho Chang walking in on you, right? Maybe she wants nothing to do you. D- maybe she wants nothing to do with you. Forgive me if like, my memory's a bit wrong, but didn't Harry kill Cedric Diggory? Yeah, he killed him. He shot him. He shot him last July. And she loved him. And he shot yeah. him. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that, Harry? Why'd you kill Cedric? This is a quaffle. <laughs> <laughs> it's all of a he one. wanted to this is a quaffle it's a wee bit late this, this is, is a quaffle, quaffle. we apologise to any Scots listening to this at the moment like this ball oh, like <laughs> this ball <laughs> alright give that back alright Ron we've... don't like Ron, where that was going you're a broom Right, no. Take the seeker off, Harry. Take the snitch off, Harry. Take the broom off, Ron. <laughs> they can't be trusted. Hermione, what are you doing with them quaffles? Give them back here. And how about Dumbledore in Deathly Hallows? Gives Harry the snitch and goes, perform cunnilingus on this ball and it will tell you all you need to know. <laughs> That's all I ask. And all I ask is that I can be there when you do it. <laughs> it's my dying wish. <laughs> Guess who is a Slytherin prefect? It's Malfoy. Dram. Right? And he's like, oh, what? Malfoy? Huh. Who are the other options? Crab or Goyle? It's like eight people in each year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's honestly he's the best choice out of the boys. If they pick one boy and one girl, which they seem to do, Malfoy is a hundred percent the yeah, best Malfoy. choice. Crab Malfoy Goyle. represents the qualities of Slytherin more than anyone else. Yeah, which the first year, um, Mister Crab, Mister Crab, um, I'm being bullied. <laughs> Look at these muscles, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Malfoy's the best lad for the job. It was interesting. This whole, the shame that children have of association 
Ron being in that room being associated with uh, Luna, not Ron, Harry being in that room being associated with Luna Lovegood and Neville Longbottom, who's playing with a plant he is due to mate with. Right, he's got a little fleshlight with him, <laughs> and he's shaking. He's got an or he's got an organic <laughs> fleshlight that he's shaking about, right, and uh, <laughs> and Harry's embarrassed yeah. to be there, and I felt bad. Not until Ron makes fun of either Crab or Goyle by saying, saying he's got a face like a baboon's arse. And Luna Lovegood is rolling around laughing. Luna, how can I stand up for you when you actively enjoy other people being bullied? Yeah. Answer me that. I'm waiting. What does it all mean? I don't know. They arrive at Hogsmeade Station. And we've met... Uh, oh, yeah, we've talked about Malfoy Doggy, haven't we? Talk about it again. Malfoy makes a... <laughs> well, Malfoy makes a comment about Doggy, and then Harry's like, oh, he must be talking about Sirius Black. Paranoid. Wow. I think he's just saying dogging, honestly. I don't know what you're on about. Can a boy not say dogging kind of without boy. somebody else thinking there's something behind it all? What does it all mean? Answers on a postcard. Please. <laughs> They've arrived at... Hogwarts. And that's the end of that chapter, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Right. Evil skeleton horses. Right. Are you ready for this week's quiz? Stubby Boardman. Question what oh, quiz quiz a key quiz quiz a key quiz quiz quiz. Foo. Gonna ask you. Gonna ask some, Some questions. questions. How well will you do? Quiz. Quizzy, quiz, quizzy, quiz, 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 quiz. Gonna ask you about Harry Potter, Lucas. Gonna ask you questions three plus two. <laughs> okay. Question one. What kind of birds is Sirius chasing? Pigeons. Correct. Question two. How long is Luna's hair? How long is Luna's hair? Shoulder length. No, it's waist length. <coughs> Question hell. three. What did Neville pull out of his bag or pocket, whatever it was? Mimbulus Mimbletonia. Yep, correct. Um, Question four. What did the quibbler think Sirius may be instead of a murderer? Lead singer of Cor a band. Correct. Question five. What trees lined the path uh, down to the lake? Trees. Willow trees. Pine trees. Unfortunately, oh. you have lost the quiz. Quiz, 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 quiz. Lovely. Shall we rate the chapter? Sure. Right. Oh, I wasn't meant to do that before. I was, wasn't I? Uh, right. Is that <laughs> right? The 104 long streak is broken. <laughs> How many? How many? Hmm. How many? How many skeleton horses out of five are you going to give this chapter? It was a bit of all right, this chapter. I'm glad we're finally going back to Hogwarts. It's a bit of familiarity. We've got the Hogwarts Express. We've got Neville. We've got Malfoy. We've got Crab and Goyle. We've got Cho Chang. All right. 
But also we've got a brand new character and it's Luna Lovegood. I love the character of Luna Lovegood. I think she's very interesting. It's She's such a big character that comes in so late. Book number five. Uh, but I'm very excited to see more of what she's getting up to. So it was a middling chapter, but pretty good. I'm going to give it three and a half skeletal horses out of five. I loved this chapter. There was no... We are returning to where we want to be, Hogwarts. Away with you, Weasley parents. Away with you, Sirius Black. Away with you, Tonks. We are back on the train, and Harry's being plunged into scenarios that we've, like, you know, not had to see before. He's getting the train alone. We're going to have some new isolation of Harry, where he's going to grow closer to characters, you know. Add a bit of variety to the mix. Let's make this bowl of soup, which is Harry Potter... Have a bit of spice in it. Paprika, please. Um, we get a showcase of classic characters coming back in. Dogging. I can't give this chapter anything lower than four and a half skeleton horses out of five. Fantastic. Now it is time for the nation's second favourite. Well, I think we should have a, 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 re, a recount. It's been a couple of years since we've had a, a vote on this, on what's everyone's favourite segment. But it's the second favourite segment, as of today, Hedwig's Droppings. We're not alluding to owl poo, we're not alluding to ploppings. We mean the messages you send in when we allude to Hedwig's Droppings. What's in a beak this week? Well, we've got a lovely message from, if I can get it up, from Tim Bond. Now, Tim Bond uh, sent us an email saying, I came to see your show earlier this year with my girlfriend and I enjoyed it so much that I've booked tickets for when you're in Brighton next year for me and my sister. The tickets were a surprise for my sister Susan for Christmas. I'm obsessed with the podcast and I'm so excited to see you both live again. Keep up the hilarious work. Well, thank you so much, Tim, for that email. And we're looking forward to seeing yourself and Susan. Hope you enjoyed your Christmas surprise, Susan, uh, at Brighton next month. Very exciting. And then we've just got a load of new uh, new babies to go through. Uh, how many would you like to welcome this week, Tom? Five. Five. Well, the first one we'd like to welcome is a brand new baby, Harry, and it's Alex Malander. Alex Malander, you are a greengrocer's baby, <laughs> and you have been left in the greengrocer's unattended. You are rolling about in the vegetables and all the fruit. It is heaven, but cold and a bit soily. A worm has been burrowing through an apple, and the worm has smelled you. It is now crawling across uh, the vegetables to get to you, as you lay there in a patch of produce. The worm is crawling ever closer to your ear, because it wants to go inside and lay some eggs in your ear. But I, Ooh. I, a customer of this greengrocer, do not let it. I pinch the worm before it gets in, drop it to the floor, and stamp the life out of it. I hold you up. Mwah, 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 mwah. Your parents walk in. I say, it's not what it looks like. And I hand the baby back. <laughs> hey, so there we go. Alex, thank you very much. We've also got a brand new baby Hermione, and it's Knit Cowley. Knit Cowley. Knit Cowley. You are on a cruise ship. Uh, it is your family's first vacation after having you. Wow. You're barely newborn and they're going on holiday. Oh, we need it, dear. Fine. Take it. I am on said <laughs> cruise ship. Relaxing on my own. <laughs> you, uh, in the same style as Baby's Day Out, have wandered away on your own. You can, like, uh, you can crawl about. There's a shuffleboard match going on, on deck. You crawl into it, but without paying attention, 
the shuffleboard lot sweep you. You go circling towards the side of the ship, off the edge, into the water. I see the whole thing happen. I tie a rope to my leg, jump off the side of the ship, <laughs> catch you, and then realize I didn't tie the other end of the, the rope to anything. So I have to throw you back on board where I drown to death. Lovely. So thank you very much, Nit. Now, next up, we've got a baby Hermione, and it's Shani Lindley. I know that name. Do you? Shani Lindley. Shani Lindley. Shani Lindley. Shani Lindley. Um, Shani... That's not a song, so I don't know if you do know that name. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a real song. <laughs> well, I pronounced it. Oh, that name? Shani Lindley. No, no, no. It's Hallelujah. That's what, <laughs> that's what that song is. That's Hallelujah, not Shani Lindley. Oh. Jury's out. How do you know baby Shani Lindley? I think they came to see my solo show. Um. Um. Shani Lindley. Shani Lindley. You are a crocodile. No, you're not a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents abandoned you at the side of the road in a little brown box. Rain came down and flooded the box. It falls to pieces and you got washed down the street into a storm drain. Like in America, how they have these massive drains that children can <laughs> climb into. <laughs> Mm. While down there, you would get adopted by a family of crocodiles. Isn't that beautiful? They raise you as their own instead of eating you, right? Your teeth are sharp. <laughs> You've been down there for a few months. One day, I decide, because I don't have a day job anymore, to go looking <laughs> down the sewers. I hear a crocodile baby. I think, oh my, a crocodile baby. I wonder ever so closer and look at you. You are trying to kill me and eat me. Behind you are your crocodile family. I realise what's happened here. You've been taken away <laughs> by these crocodiles. And I've been left with no other choice but to murder them all in front of you. Um, I take out my little knife, pounce on them one by one, slashing out their eyes, cutting their necks, murdering them. You don't like what you saw, but at the end of the day, you may have been raised a crocodile baby, but at the end of the day, you're still a human. <laughs> so I hold you up, take a thumb of the crocodile blood, christen you in the name of the Lord, and that's lovely. Now, next, we've got a baby Harry, and it's Reese Roberts. Have you got me coming out of your computer speakers? Because I'm it. Can you hear myself? Try again. Hello? There we go. That's better. <sighs> Reese <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> you are a baby that was to be dropped off by the stork. Along the way, you were dropped down the wrong chimney. You fell down the chimney. But unfortunately, this chimney was like bricked off. And so you're trapped inside a chimney, which I can't imagine anything scarier. No, oh, me neither. I am having one of my rooftop walks, where I walk along the rooftops of every terraced house in the neighbourhood. <laughs> um, I hear your cries. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think, oh dear. Perhaps a baby has fallen down the chimney. 
Shine a light down the chimney. Can't see anything. Too narrow for me to climb down. I wait until midnight when the family are asleep. I break in. Go into their living room where the chimney breast is bricked up. I take a saw and I saw into the chimney, taking out brick by by brick, where I find you revealed to myself. Bit sooty, I blow it away. <laughs> I walk you upstairs. Um, this wasn't their intended baby, but there's a couple uh, in bed together, fast asleep. I lay you between them, and I'm on my way. Fantastic. There you go, Reese. And finally for today, we've got a new baby, Harry, and it's Amy Ann. Amy Ann. Hmm. Oh my god. Amy Ann. <laughs> Amy Ann. Ooh, my, that's interesting. So when it gets to night time, my desktop background changes. Didn't know that. Amy Ann. Oh, that's exciting. I am mourning the death of my son. <laughs> A bomb was dropped on him when he went in a, uh, a church to retrieve a pine cone. Don't know. I don't know what that was about. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who drops a bomb on a church during Mussolini's rule? By the way, if anyone wants to listen to the latest episode of Double Vision, we've been watching Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. <laughs> Spoilers. Oh, sorry. Back to you, Tom. I am mourning the death of my son. <laughs> <laughs> May your grave, where you were buried with your pine cone, which you had to have to your demise. To, oh, no, to his demise. To his demise, right? A pine tree has grown out. One night, in a uh, fit of fury, I chopped down said pine tree. Um, I take you to my home, blind drunk, and I make a... Uh, I take the pine tree to my home, blind drunk, and I make a little wooden boy out of the pine tree. Maybe more. I pass out in the morning. Um, I've come to find that a fairy has wished you to life. I am thrilled. I hold you in my arms. You say to me, hang on, I might be one day old. But I've got the mind of like a 10 year old. I go, shh, you're one day old in my arms. And I wrap you up in a bundle so tight you can't get out. And I keep you like that. Isn't that lovely? Oh, that's very nice. So thank you very much, Amy. And, and that was Hedwig's Droppings. This has been the Pottervision Podcast. Thank you so, so much to everyone for listening. Well, we're going on tour. We would love to see you there and we'd love to meet you as well. I think that's one of our favourite things going on tour is meeting podcast listeners and fans and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we always hang around for a little bit after every show to say hello. So definitely come and say hello if, you, if you're there, have pictures and stuff like that. We bloody love it. Uh, so we're going everywhere. There's like 22 dates. Uh, the first few were like Chorley, Liverpool, Carlisle. Then we're going up to Scotland, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Dundee. Then back down to Newcastle, Scarborough, Sheffield, Leeds. We've also got Manchester dates. We're going to Leicester. We're going to, where else are we going? Birmingham, Southampton, London, Brighton, Swansea, Hollyhead, Denby. We're also going to Belfast. And there's definitely some other places that I've forgotten about. But please come and see us. That'd be lovely uh, to see you there. Uh, next week, we'll be on episode 106. We're on chapter 11 of book five, The Sorting Hat's new song. 
And as always, if you want bonus episodes every other Monday, uh, we're on uh, Patreon doing an episode. We've just done Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, which is a bloody strange film. And uh, next week we'll be doing Wallace and Gromit, The Wrong Trousers. So patreon.com slash pottervision. There's loads of other goodies up there. And you'll be supporting us and covering our costs. So, you have been the nation's witness to a powder puff body fart, Tom and Lawrence. You have been DJ bearded bastard, Lucas Kirkby. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Potter Vision Podcast. The music was performed by Jack Evans. If you'd like bonus content and to support the show, you can visit patreon.com forward slash Potter Vision.